A very warm welcome ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the show again. This is the Walter Rangi show with me your host Walter Rangi. Well ladies and gentlemen, Karibu sana. This <coughs> this has as an opportunity for us to review what happened this past weekend on all matters sports that is rugby, local football, local uh, rugby, international rugby and also international football. And today I'm going to kick it off with EPL games. This past weekend we had a host of games. Looking at what happened this weekend, we had Manchester City beating West Ham 2-1 at home. West Brom beat uh, Brighton at home, that is 1-0. Aston Villa travelled all the way to Leeds and beat Leeds away in a scoreline of 1-0. Newcastle versus Wolves ended up in a draw. Crystal Palace versus Fulham was an, ended up in a barren draw, that was a London derby. Leicester versus Arsenal uh, in favour of Arsenal, this was a very surprising game. So. Uh, congratulations to the Arsenal. Tottenham versus Burnley ended in favour of Tottenham. That is a 4-0 emphatic score and versus Burnley. And with Bale starring uh, in that performance, a beautiful weekend for the North London side. Liverpool were away to Sheffield United and um, coming back from a couple of losses, Liverpool had it in the bag, winning 2-0 away. And finally, Everton uh, beat uh, Southampton at home comfortably. And now to the game of the weekend, that was Manchester United versus Chelsea. This was a very big game, touted as the match of the weekend, really. So, I mean, a lot was really expected of the two sides. But this, the game ended in a barren draw uh, between Manchester United and Chelsea. Of course, the, it had the highs and the lows of uh, what we'd have expected couple of opportunities here and there for Chelsea to probably nick one away. Manchester United were also playing on a counter-attack as always and they could get opportunities here and there but it ended in a barren draw and uh, albeit not really being a good result, a couple of uh, points here and there for, for the two sides and of course I had my prediction uh, which was uh, Chelsea to beat Manchester United and I didn't get that right but you at home and I'm pretty sure you made your own prediction and hopefully you got it right but Chelsea versus Manchester Manchester United a fixture that would uh, would have uh, I mean given us something to cheer for the weekend ended up in a draw so I'm still a very big gap between uh, Chelsea and the top four Manchester United uh, hopefully cemented their place in the top four with that one point. So looking at uh, where they stand, the two teams, and where we're looking at the fixtures and the standings of the league, really. Uh, Manchester United currently sit at number two, uh, just behind Manchester City by 12 points. Uh, City uh, have opened a very, very commanding lead at the top against all the other sides in the EPL. So, it's a, it's a matter of cat and mouse games uh, between the other uh, football teams in the league as they try and cover up this, uh, the gap between themselves and Manchester City. Now Leicester are uh, third in the, in the league and West Ham close out the top four. And also Chelsea coming in at the Europa League position, that is number five with uh, a total of 44 points. Manchester City stand at up top with 62 points. Manchester United follow the league leaders with 50 points, that is a total of 12 um, points in terms of a deficit. Leicester City coming in at third uh, with 49 points and uh, West Ham United with 45. That is the top four as it stands on March day 26. And looking at the top, uh, the bottom three, uh, th those are the teams that are meant for relegation. This, this is Fulham uh, at number 18 with 23 points. West Brom United at number 19 with 17 points and closing out the league that is Sheffield United at number with points 11. So ladies and gentlemen that's the roundup for the EPL for March day 26. Hopefully your teams came out uh, on top. My team did not do uh, what I expected, expected really of them but I'm hopeful that on March day 27 we'll get it right. And our further feel, ladies and gentlemen, this past weekend we had lots and lots of rugby action. We had the Madrid Sevens, we had the Kenya Cup uh, making its return. We had um, Six Nations happening further afield. And uh, down in New Zealand and Australia, we had the Australian uh, version of Super Rugby, that is the Super Rugby AU. And 
the Super Rugby Aotearoa. And looking at the results uh, from this past weekend, ladies and gentlemen, the the first match of uh, the Super Rugby Aotearoa this week was um, <coughs> Highlanders hosting the Crusaders, and it was a match that um, was really touted to be um, <coughs> a good game. And of course, it, it ended up being a very good game uh, with the Crusaders uh, coming on top. The the Crusaders have this um, this thing they do, which is they keep on winning. They keep on doing the thing that every other uh, fan of theirs expects. So we ended up winning uh, the first game at uh, at the Highlanders' home this past weekend. In the second match of the weekend, we had uh, Blues playing host. No, the Hurricanes playing host to the Blues, and um, a very tough, tough encounter for for the two sides. Of course, looking at uh, the fixture itself. Uh, Blues uh, came in second last year versus um, the, the Crusaders, and it was it was not really an easy game going into this one. The, Hi the Hurricanes were leading in the first half. Uh, sadly, in the second half, the Blues came from behind and won the game away to the Hurricanes. So this this past uh, weekend serves as an opportunity, or served as an opportunity for the two top teams from the New Zealand uh, conference to probably flex their muscles and show what they had from the last year's uh, event that they can be able to go out and play and also keep up their good uh, good form. So coming back uh, to the Super Rugby, no sorry, to the Six Nations that happened uh, this past weekend and a very very uh, funny thing that happened this week is England lost, the chariot is down, Eddie Jones is on uh, is on a very very hard hard ground as it as we speak today because um, they've lost uh, they are the defending champions of the Six Nations and you would have expected uh, England to to get one better of worlds but eventually they did they couldn't get uh, the, the final result and um, a statement was put out by the English uh, rugby union talking about um, uh, respect and all that so. I mean, uh, the team came under attack after losing to Wales, and uh, I know rugby builds character, rugby builds uh, together togetherness, and all that. So um, we are in support of the English rugby union on matters respect to the game. So that one is something that we cannot really um, we can't we can't uh, negotiate on matters respect when it comes to what the teams are doing and how much hard work they put into into getting ready for match day. So uh, the English, as much as they lost, I am happy that they lost, but uh, kudos to the English Rugby Union and then also the Welsh Rugby Union also supported the, the whole course, putting up a statement themselves uh, saying that they, they do not support any attack on any opponent or any other players that were involved in the match. So kudos to that. However, the chariot is down. Six Nation is now going back to Twickenham this year. Hopefully we can get... Um, we can get a new winner this year. There is a big game that is supposed to come up that is between France and Wales. Keep it locked uh, on the World Orangi Show. We'll keep you updated on all that. This is uh, Kenya Cup match day one. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a very interesting, uh, very, very interesting match day one. We had uh, the collected match day one results um, had uh, Cabra Sugar beating uh, Masinda Moliro, the new, the new kids on the block, 56-0. Menengai Oilers uh, were winners against the Kenya Harlequins at the refinery, that is 39 to 13. KCB, the defending champions, uh, were hosting Strathmolios, another new kid on the block, and ended up winning 24 16. And finally, on the last game and uh, the final fixture of the match day one, that is Top Fry and Nakuru were playing at home, taking on Black Blood RFC, and it ended in favor of Nakuru, that is 13. And Black Blood 8. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to divulge a little bit into match day one and I'll probably take you through what my thoughts are and what I think um, uh, is, 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 is something to note. If you look at the score lines, Cabras Sugar, um, Cabras putting a nail uh, technically on, on the new kids and just hammering it down and making sure that uh, they don't get anything, not even a point, not even a three point score. For the for the students, I mean, it, it shows the dominance at, uh, that Cabras is ready to show in the league this year, and uh, putting them up first uh, on the log and making sure that they 
stand out and uh, follow up on what they were doing in the previous year that was the 2019 and 2020 season so uh, it was it was a very good game a balance uh, of sorts they made nine changes to the starting team Cabras were very comfortable they were playing at home and it was expected of them to really get uh, a better result against the students and it's not really a surprise that uh, Cabras um, came in at to at, with top honors in this game. So uh, the second game is uh, Meningai Oilers versus Kenya Harlequins. Now this is a fixture that I called last week. In my match day predictions, I did make a call and said Kenya Harlequins were going to the refinery and they were going to lose against uh, Meningai Oilers. And, and ladies and gentlemen, just hear me out. There's something that happens whenever Kenya Harlequins and Meningai Oilers meet. Be it in sevens, be it in fifteens, it is a matter of dominance. The way the Oilers are confident and comfortable uh, against uh, Kenya Harlequins is really ast astonish astonishing and astounding. It's it's something that I mean, I mean <clears throat> as an Oilers fan, look, if you look at the fixtures and you think about the coming weekend, your your head also looks up and says, if it's Kenya Harlequins, that is a win. It's a sure win for them. But I still I still I still maintain that. Uh, it's a 3-0 win now uh, in favour of uh, Menengai Oilers and of course uh, the battle keeps on continuing and we hope that this fixture will keep on giving us results that keep on keeping us uh, wanting to know what, what Kenya Cup is and what uh, really is Menengai Oilers and congratulations to the Menengai Oilers and team. You guys are doing very well and congratulations for that. KCB versus uh, Strathmoleos. Now this is a game that was billed as a <coughs> David versus Goliath uh, kind of encounter because uh, Strathmore have just been promoted from the Championship League and everyone really expected uh, an easy ride for KCB. I did not expect uh, this result and of course this is a shocker in terms of, uh, of match day one results. However, I'd, I'd like to point it out that uh, Strat Molios are no pushover themselves. Uh, they've, they've done, if you look at their selection and how they recruit their players, they've, they've done quite a good, uh, good number of uh, recruitments that is going into the season. Um, you, you, you'd expect uh, the students to probably shy out and uh, go in fear, but they did what they could and, and came in uh, a, a, a bit narrow, but they did get it against KCB. And in the final game, that is top for Nakura FC versus um, Black Blood. We we expected much, we expected much uh, of, of 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 this from uh, top for Nakuru, but uh, it was a very close encounter. So which means Black Blood get a losing bonus point from Nakuru, moving into match day two. And our further afield, ladies and gentlemen, we had our Kenya Sevens and Kenya. Lionesses um, battling out for top honors in the Madrid, and they just ended Madrid Sevens, a two-week tournament that saw uh, a host of teams uh, descend on Madrid and make sure that they get a precision feel for Sevens as they prepare for the Olympics, probably later on this year. Hopefully, the Olympics can uh, can go ahead as planned. But the Kenya Sevens had a scorecard that um, that would have elicited uh, probably positive and negative emotions from uh, the local fans and also the international fans who are following the team. The Kenya Sevens came in second, uh, that is uh, losing three times to Argentina in the past two weeks and uh, the Kenya Lionesses came in also second, losing in the final uh, of the Madrid Sevens 19-0 uh, to Russia and uh, the Kenya Sevens lost in the final of the Madrid Sevens 45-7 to uh, Argentina. Now I'd I just wanted to pinpoint a few things and um, uh, it, 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 it is the first game of the, it was the first game of, of, of for all those boys uh, and girls who were, who were taking part in the Madrid 7s and just interesting to note that uh, it's the first weekend, there's the Jitas, there's also the fact that um, we have a new kind of setup with uh, Namco's uh, Innocent Simu taking over uh, from the former coach. Uh, trying to assemble his charges here and there, and of course you'd expect uh, a few mistakes here and there. But I would like to shout out the boys for a stellar performance uh, against uh, the USA. We beat uh, Mike Friday twice, and I'd love to note it. Otoya, that is two nil already, so you gotta make uh, you you got to catch up and probably make sure that uh, 
you get one better of Kenya, but we'll always be on our guard to make sure that the USA will always lose. I mean, Kenya 7s, um, looking at that final, um, we, 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 I think we had, we had overused uh, our energy or whatever it was that happened. Because 45-7 uh, is not really a scoreline for a final. And uh, heads up, boys, uh, it's a fast weekend out. And I know you guys are doing a lot in terms of trying to catch up on your fitness. There's also the coronavirus that has put everyone b back, uh, back foot. And uh, you guys are trying to do your level best. So it's pretty much uh, smooth sailing now moving forward as you prepare for the Olympics. And we'd like to wish you all the best from the Walter Rangi Show. That's a lot uh, for you guys to, to really chew on uh, in terms of the local and international setup. And I'd like to uh, let, you know, know, let you know guys that we are doing our level best at the Walter Rangi to make sure that we bring you timely news, timely post-match reviews and also um, everything that in, involves our local sports and international sports. Well, this has been a post-match review. Um, comfortably done by my, myself, Walter Rangi, your host, and I hope to see you again here next week. Thank you so much. See you again. Enjoy the sports.